I don't have any real update for you. I'm obviously um, the amount of minutes that all these guys are playing for the first time in their professional career. We're going to be super cautious with everybody. So we pulled him out of the game. He'll get evaluated tonight, just like everybody else. But um, yeah, no update. Did you see what happened? I don't even think there. I don't know if there was an acute thing. I just know he felt like there was some tightness, and that we're going to be really cautious with our guys in any context, but especially this one. Um, and then when this one, I mean, it gets here last night, and I imagine yesterday was a really, really long day for him. Uh, how much does he have to catch up? Is this just to give him a feel? What do you hope to do with him? We're hoping to create the environment for all these guys that is best suited for their growth. And so each guy has their own particular case. You mentioned uzman has got some unique um, aspects to sort of what his itinerary has looked like over the past month. But maybe the most unique part about him is how he thinks and works. And he's like, I want to play. Like, that's what I'm here to do. This is what I'm a basketball player. And so I'd like to play. And I was proud of the way they approached the game, super unselfish, talking on defense. But of course, it's going to be a process for him to overcome jet lag, much less catch up on what we've been doing. And um, it will be nice to have two days in between our next game and a practice to integrate him. Would you guys have been okay with him saying, if he had said, no, no, let me take a little time, would that have been okay too? Oh, sure. I, I don't know that you'll find the organization that um, cares more about the players that are actually playing the game and certainly tries to walk the walk to make them feel like they're a part in all these processes. This isn't some sort of um, you know, this is a this is a collaborative effort that we're trying to push towards something really hard, which is to build a championship level team. And so, the way we communicate with our guys and the way that we appreciate their communication with us um, is something that won't ever wane. You know, just to go back to Jalen for one second, just saying the words precaution and we'll see and all that. At least you know it's not the immediate big concern that sometimes when you see a hamstring. There is immediate fear of what it could be. Obviously, it's not that. I don't know, to be honest. I'll leave that to the experts. I mean, you know, I'm uh, focused on the group and making sure that we keep guys out there that are fresh and fit and healthy. I'll say one thing, like his approach to his body, especially as a young guy, has been immaculate. I was in the training room today for an hour. And I saw all our young guys in there quite early getting treatment, stretching, drinking water, talking about fatigue, soreness, um, and taking steps to sort of eradicate those things, to mitigate those things to the degree that you can. So I've been so impressed with his approach there. And that probably buoys our confidence more than anything that these guys are all not only professional in the ways that, I mean, when you see them, but professional all the time that you don't. Well, all these guys have just been really stuck into this thing. I and mean, obviously we're not, you know, it's a different kind of environment to normal summer league, but our guys have been around each other. They've been sharing meals together. Um, they've been getting a lot of sleep. So I'm, I'm really proud of what their approach has been like so far. I and mean, you can tell we were a little fatigued today as a group. But again, that's where the, we get this nice little break coming up. We'll take some questions on Zoom. Kelly Eco. Hey, Coach, just want to get a sense of your overall feel, the pace of the game tonight, overall from start to finish. You said pace of the game, Kelly? Yes, sir. Yeah, I thought Toronto did a really good job of getting their hooks into us. You know, they got a lot of really strong, hard-playing dudes, and a slow game that definitely does not suit us. A lot of that sort of – um, vicious cycle we got caught in had to do with our turnovers that led to layups for them. And then we're having to go against their set defense to bring it back up. Um, so I, more than anything, I want to make sure that our guys recognize how that kind of snowball can get rolling downhill in a bad way and how we had it rolling downhill in a good way in our first two games. I think that's probably the most salient lesson in my mind, just not having watched the film yet. Zach Allen. Hey, hey, coach. Hey, how do you like the how do you like the minutes you're getting from Jalen at the one, uh, particularly at the point guard position? Uh, how you like how you like his decision making as well, too, coach? I'm really proud of his approach and the way that he's um, 
you know, when I spoke to him about what he dreamed about showing the world over the course of this event, he talked about playmaking and making plays for others, which I think says a lot about how he's wired. And I think it also has a real indication about just his own growth mindset, the willingness that he's shown to tackle hard things. That's part and parcel of why he's gotten to where he is. And so handling and pick and roll, kick ahead passes to open teammates, um, drive and kick situations, especially to his non-dominant hand. Those are things that we've highlighted and that he's really made a strong effort to get to those situations, to get the reps that he needs to improve in those areas. Um, and gosh, I think I've seen a lot of improvement already. Sergeant Kumas. Hey, Coach, hope we're doing well. Uh, despite the loss, when you're seeing Alfred uh, Schengen bring up the ball and kind of uh, dish passes like that at six foot ten. That's your center. Um, when you see that, wh what, what do you uh, make of it? Him bringing up the ball like that. A great mentor of mine, uh, Kenny Atkinson, used to talk about everybody wants to be a point guard. Being the point guard is making the right decision and then doing it again and then doing it again. And I think what really stands out to me about Alperin is that even in tight quarters, bumping and grinding, having people reach and push him off balance, or it seems that way to me, he still is finding his open teammate, keeping his composure, using his shot fakes and his pivot, the fundamental skills that he brings to bear to create an advantage. And when the crowd surrounds him, he's constantly finding the open teammate. So um, not only the stuff that's obvious out in the open court, bringing it over half court, but even the stuff in tight spaces, just the touch passing. Um, yeah, remarkable, <laughs> remarkable. And again, it'll take a while for us. I spoke about this the other day to figure out how to position him best and his teammates a while to figure out how to play with such a unique, um, unique player like Alfred. Chris Gardner. Coach, have, have the coaches, the coaching staff already have begun having discussions about how much time the young players will spend in the G League this coming no. season? No, we haven't. Um, we're lucky that we've got a fair bit of time until that G League season starts. And I know there's a lot of pride about our G League program. Um, Mahmoud Abdel Fattah did an amazing job with those guys over the past several seasons. We all saw the growth at KJ Martin, um, Kevin Porter Jr., uh, Anthony Lamb, you know, a lot of guys that are a part of our program now, Armani Brooks had in that environment. And so it's a great tool. More and more teams that you see are utilizing it. Rockets have always been out way out in front on that regard. So it'll be a big weapon for us, but there's lots to lots to be decided until we get to that part of the sequence. Thank you. We'll take two more. Ali Kambajani. Hey, Will. Uh, you've mentioned through the first three games the need to play with pace and uh, getting into the offensive position, uh, possessions and actions quickly. But from a half-court standpoint, what has stood out to you about Josh Christopher and then uh, Jalen before the injury as ball handlers and then Stangun as a screener and decision maker. Seen a lot of defenses through the first three games kind of helping and shrinking the floor. So just curious your thoughts and their growth overall. Yeah, I think that's an excellent question, Alicon. The variety is how people learn. And so for them to get a chance to start to form the mental models for opposing defenses and start to figure out the patterns that they're going to see and that they can latch onto, um, I, that is what makes summer league great and how those guys are going to grow the fastest. And so that's in large part why I think people improve with game minutes is because they get more opportunities to establish those patterns. And what I love about it more than just the reps is the way that they communicate as they're doing it with each, with us, with each other, um, even with themselves sometimes as they're coming off the court. God, I missed that single side tag the low man came I should have found the corner so I, the it's invaluable the experience they're getting and I've been so gratified with just their commitment to getting to the right places and trying to make the right play thanks Will. thank you and last question Brian Barrifield coach 30 combined points in quarters two and three what what happened on the defensive end and what type of learning process will that be for these younger players yeah, I think it's tempting to pick, um, you know, one or two aspects of the game and really focus on it. And of course, we'll try to tear our concerns about what to learn from. But I think more than anything else, the big lesson for me, uh, which we discussed at halftime and after the game, was understanding how uh, 
the littlest details are the things that add up to the biggest results. And so um, sometimes when the score starts to balloon, you behave in a different way. When you miss a few shots in a row, you behave in a different way. When they make a few shots in a row, you behave in a different way. And so much of the NBA is just being relentless in trying to maximize the next thing you've got in front of you. And so um, we'll go back and assess what the most common next things are and try to do a better job next time out of, of uh, taking advantage of those. Thank you, Coach.